like to show you some common bonding for a handful of atoms that you'll come across when drawing Lewis structures. First, hydrogen and carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. These three atoms are in period two, and these three atoms will obey the, quote, octet rule. Then there are the halogens, which are group 7A. We'll look at these first as terminal atoms, how they behave in bonding as their terminal atoms. And then two atoms in period three that you'll come across quite frequently, phosphorus and sulfur. And these atoms may have more than their octet, or they will disobey the octet rule. I'd like to uh, start off with hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, and the halogens. We'll start off with hydrogen, which is in group one. And hydrogen will bond one way with a single bond. It has one electron of its own, and it shares another electron with another atom when forming a covalent bond. One line, single bond, which means two electrons, one and two. Next, we'll look at carbon. Carbon is in group four. And carbon has a few variations. First, carbon with four single bonds around it. And again, carbon has four electrons of its own in its valence. So it brings four electrons to the, we'll say, sharing party. And it picks up another four when it bonds with other atoms. Carbon can also form two double bonds. Bringing four of its valence electrons to the sharing party and it picks up four more when it forms covalent bonds with other atoms. Here we have two double bonds around the carbon. And carbon could also form two single bonds and a double bond. Still having four electrons of its own, bringing four electrons, it's four valence electrons to the sharing party, and it picks up four more when it forms these covalent bonds with other atoms. In this case, two single bonds and a double bond. And occasionally, we'll see carbon forming a triple bond and a single bond. And we see again, one, two, three, four atoms that carbon will bring to the sharing party, and it'll pick up four more from another atom, or other, another two atoms, let's say. So let's look at nitrogen. Nitrogen is in group five. And nitrogen has two lone pairs when it forms three single bonds. Nitrogen is in group five, and it has five valence electrons. So it brings these five electrons to the sharing party. Three of them are in single bonds, forming three covalent single bonds. And then two of them are in lone pairs. So count one, two, three, four, five electrons that nitrogen brings. And then it picks up three electrons 
from three other atoms when it forms three single covalent bonds. Nitrogen can also form a double bond and a single bond with two lone pairs. And we look at this again and we see that nitrogen brings five electrons of its own, it's five valence electrons to the sharing party, and it picks up again three more from two other atoms. Let's see if I can get this going here. Nitrogen can also form an ion. And the common ion that nitrogen forms is nitrogen with four single bonds and it has a plus charge. In this case Nitrogen only has four electrons in its valence, or brings only four electrons to the sharing party. Therefore, it is lacking one electron. If it's lacking one electron, it has therefore a positive charge. But it picks up a total of four electrons from other atoms. where previously we've seen two examples where it picks up only one, two, three. Here it's picking up one, two, three, four. Because it has to pick up four electrons from other atoms and it only brings one, two, three, four to the sharing party, it ends up with a positive one charge. Again, look at these forms of nitrogen up here. There are one, two, three, four, five electrons around the nitrogen. Down here, there's only four. And because of that, ends up with a positive one charge. There are other variations of nitrogen with positive, in fact, even negative charges. But we won't need to get into those because they won't be common to us. And let's look at oxygen. Oxygen is in group six. Oxygen, because it's in group six, has six electrons. Around itself or brings six electrons to the sharing party and then it picks up two more electrons from other atoms when it bonds. And another possibility with oxygen is having one double bond and two lone pairs. So we see again oxygen having six electrons of its own or bringing six electrons to the sharing party and it picks up two more electrons when it forms a double bond with another atom. Oxygen could also form ions. The two common forms you'll see is oxygen with three single bonds and one lone pair. If you examine this carefully, count the number of valence electrons oxygen shows in this form. You'll see that it's one, two, three, three, get this straight, three, four, five. And because it only brings five electrons to the sharing party and it's in group six, 
hence the positive charge. It lacks one electron. But it picks up, rather than two electrons, three electrons from other atoms when it bonds this way. Another common form of oxygen is oxygen with a single bond and three lone pairs. Now oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons in its valence, or it brings seven electrons to the sharing party. And it picks up one more, only one more from another atom. And because it has one more electron than its group number, in other words, it has seven electrons, and its group number is six, it's in excess of one electron, so it ends up with a negative one charge. Finally, we look at the halogens, which is group 7, group 7A. I'm just going to write the word halogen here. And rather than drawing fluorine or chlorine or bromine, I'm just going to write an X. And typically what happens with these atoms, as they, beha as they behave as terminal atoms, is they form one single bond and have one, two, three lone pair electrons. So the total number of electrons in its valence is its group number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it picks up one more electron from another atom when forming a single bond. So in review, let's take a look at what's happened. I'm going to draw a little circle, or what I like to call a halo, around each of the atoms. And in doing that, we can see group one, these atoms, or this atom, hydrogen, only one, brings one electron to the sharing party and picks up one more from another atom when it shares. With carbon in group four, we can see that in all forms, in all all pieces of bonding for carbon that we're going to see. It brings four electrons to the sharing party. Goes in group four. And with nitrogen, It brings five electrons. It's in group five. When it forms neutral covalent compounds. Down here, we see that it only brings four electrons to the sharing party. It's lacking one. So hence the positive charge. Oxygen, group six, brings six electrons. You can see that with these two forms of oxygen. Down here, when, I, when oxygen forms a positive charge, it only brings five electrons to the sharing party, lacking one. So it, hence the positive charge on the oxygen. Down here, when it only brings one electron to the sharing party, but has three lone pairs, it's in excess of one electron in its valence. So hence the negative charge. And with the halogens, you see that it brings one electron to the sharing party and three lone pairs, so its valence is the same as its group number, seven. So there's no charge. These three forms here, these charged pieces of bonding, you will see these if you're asked to draw 
Lewis structures for polyatomic ions. You'll find these forms of nitrogen and oxygen only in polyatomic ions. If you're asked to draw neutral covalent Lewis structures, or neutral covalent compounds, I should say, you're going to come across these very often with no charge. One final note, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen obey the octet. These atoms here all obey the octet, even in their ionic form. What I mean is you just count the total number of electrons around each atom. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. You count the number of electrons around all these atoms total, not just the ones in the circle, but total electrons. It's always going to be eight. Phosphorus, though, on the other hand, has the possibility of, we'll say, disobeying the octet rule. in that it could form five single bonds, but still retain its five valence electrons. In this case, phosphorus has its five electrons around in its valence, but has no lone pairs. All five electrons are occupied in five single covalent bonds. And what it does is it picks up five more electrons from other atoms when forming covalent bonds. So in this case, phosphorus disobeys the octet rule, and that it has two, four, six, eight, ten electrons total. Sulfur is in group six. And sulfur will bond similarly to oxygen. It will have a double bond, one double bond, and two lone pairs. It's one possibility. Bringing six electrons to the sharing party, or it's six valence electrons to the sharing party, it picks up two more. Another way sulfur behaves similarly to oxygen is not to look like oxygen. Another way sulfur behaves similarly to oxygen that forms two single bonds and two lone pairs. Again, bringing six of its valence, six of its six valence electrons to the sharing party. One, two, three, four, five, six, and picking up two more electrons from two other atoms. And finally, sulfur, like phosphorus, can disobey the octet rule and that it could form six single bonds around itself, bringing its six valence electrons to the sharing party, forming six single covalent bonds. In this case, there are no lone pairs around sulfur. And when it does this, it'll pick up six more electrons when it bonds with other atoms. but we still see it has its six valence electrons that it brought to the sharing party. So, these two cases here is where we see two atoms disobeying the octet rule, in that 
there's more than eight electrons total around that atom when it forms a covalent compound. And up here, we see that these forms of nitrogen, excuse me, phosphorus and sulfur, obey the octet rule and bond similarly to their counterparts in their group, phosphorus and nitrogen, sulfur and oxygen.